Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. I'm curious about. I'm curious about. I'm curious I'm about. Curious about. I'm curious about building open, authentic, loving relationship. I'm curious about jealousy. I'm curious about polyamory. Does it just mean that you're fucking all the time? How can I tell my parents that my partner is already married? I'm curious about... How do you know when you're too busy to have another relationship? I'm curious about dominant and subordinate relationships. I'm curious about sexual health. How can relationships, How can relationships evolve, evolve with people evolve as they grow and change? Grow and change? Welcome to the Curious Box Podcast. This is the podcast for those who challenge the status quo and love sex and relationships. My name is Effie Bloom. And I'm Jacqueline Misla. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about redefining sex and what connection looks like in the age of COVID-19. Hey, a quick note here. Jackie and I have been recording these episodes remotely since the COVID outbreak, which is not how we normally do it. Unfortunately, in this episode, we had some issues with the audio quality. But having listened through to the whole thing, We thought the conversation was too good to just trash. So here it is. Feel free to skip this episode if it gets too annoying. It's not a representation of our usual work. Thank you for understanding. So Miss Blue, I hear that you've been going on some dates. Well, yes, I have been venturing on some dates. Um, Very, very carefully. (laughs) I was going to say, what does COVID dating look look like? (laughs) So it's interesting. We talk about this a lot in the form of safer sex, right? In in the normal, in those days when life was normal, um, we had uh, different worries. Um, we were more concerned about herpes and and uh, chlamydia than uh, lungs falling apart. Uh, but I think it's kind of a um, similar idea, right? Um, it's figuring out what safety looks like for you. Um, so that's essentially sort of defining your risk tolerance um i live in a building um with a bunch of people i live i have my own apartment i live in a building with a bunch of people and i share an elevator i have a dog that i walk three days three times a day which means i go outside three times a day i don't go grocery shopping because right at the beginning of all this i did some smart shopping and i don't need to so i'll just run in and get like milk once a week and that's about my exposure Um, I wear masks and gloves and I have been doing from the beginning and that's kind of how I take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I've been sort of, you know, I've been on Bumble, I've been on dating sites, I've been sort of connecting with people that I already know who are, you know, I'm spending more time connecting with them because they have time, I have time. And, you know, it cuts to a point where we chat, chat, chat. And at some point like, okay, so what, how do you, like in the next, next phase, mm-hmm. you know. And normally, I would say in normal circumstances, maybe go out and get something to eat, maybe get a drink, uh, and that's not quite. It hasn't been the case. Um, but what I've been doing is, and this is just a couple of people, kind of saying to them what I've just sort of described about what my current situation is and what they should expect. So, I my offer of a date is for them to join me on a date with my dog which happens to lose it a few times a day, um, and say, um, I ask them to wear mask and gloves, and if they don't have one, I will say, I'll bring one for you. And you know, I'll, I'll ask them what their situation is. So in a way that I share, like, this is how I take, how I take care of my health, how do you take care of your health? Like, mm-hmm. If they're like, I don't know, I don't even know what a mask is, then I'm like, ah, maybe we'll just wait till this thing is over. <laughs> just see that if we can find some time to chat. Um, or maybe you know how like people see that dancing is like you see someone dance it makes you think of how they have sex if you see someone mask it makes you think of how they take care of their sexual health like if, yeah if no mask no gloves meaning like i don't know right. And you're right you're right because it, it, it's an indication of your risk tolerance right, right. It's essentially what this is. and this is what safer sex is about it's about you connecting with people who share the same risk tolerance as you to feel right. safe um same with this COVID situation like for me, I you know I, I have an informed risk tolerance, and I'm and I have you know somewhat um, I'm willing to take some risks, right? And because I feel like right, rightly or wrongly, that I'm healthy, I'm at an age that is not at risk. I don't have any um, underlying conditions, as far as I know. I don't want to get sick. At the same time, I'm not that afraid of getting sick. 
Um, so, so that gives me like a range, that, that gives me an idea of what my risk tolerance is, right? So for the right person under the right circumstances with the right protection in the right way, I'm willing to go through walks with two, two, two people. And I've done that with two people. And they've ended up being these like long walks. Um, and, you know, also there are a couple of things. Um, we walking in the same direction, we're not facing one another. So that's actually kind of, you know, somewhat of a protection. It'd be much different if you're like facing people. Mm-hmm. So I see people that I, at the park uh, where I take the dog out, that clearly on dates um, of some sort. And they're sitting on park benches and like facing each other. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in my little world, I think, okay, we're kind of facing like the same direction, walking. Um, so that's kind of the safety part of things. And then what I think is absolutely fascinating is how you're showing up for the date. Right? Normally, most of us show, show up for a date in our, like, hopefully in our best self. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, showered. <laughs> you, know, right, you, you smell know. good. You look uh, good. You smell good. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm definitely taking care of my personal hygiene. Mm-hmm. But um, <laughs> you're like I do the showering and I do the smelling good. Yeah, but I'm not gonna like you know wear my summer dress, right? right. So um, I am in sweatpants and sneakers and um, you know my comfiest clothes and sweaters um, because you know essentially I'm taking my dog out for a walk, which is what I do every day, and then they're joining me on a walk. And then um, especially the last date I went on, I thought it was really interesting because it was a cold day. And I was wearing a hat, and then I was wearing a mask. I was wearing a, a polonic sweater, a coat, sweatpants, and sneakers. Um, so essentially, and gloves, right? So essentially, all they could see were my eyes. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's it. Not, they couldn't see my hair, couldn't see anything else, just my eyes. And it made me think a lot about um, countries where women wear burqas. So those black, all covered, head to toe, with just eyes, eyes showing, Muslim head like um, outfits. Uh, it really made me think about that. Like there are nations and countries out there where women only show their eyes, and that's kind of their exposure to the world. And that's kind of what it felt like. I felt like. I was just like I had my eyes. And that's all I had to show for. You know, even when you smile, like you're smiling. But like you have to really be like smizing, whatever. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, <laughs> smile with your eyes. Yeah. Are people posting pictures on Bumble and Tinder and such with them with their mask on? Like as you're swiping, are you seeing masks? You know what? No, but I'm gonna just do that now. Right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add. Yeah, you should, yeah totally. Because you're like, this is actually what, who you're gonna meet right now. It's this mask. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, I do think that the person that I met was, uh, they did say to me, I recognize your dog before I recognize you. So ah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I mean, sure. Um, you know, and it's like, of course, in my case, it's slightly different because, you know, uh, I meet these people, either I know them or um, they've seen what I look like in pictures of Bumble. Also, you can like Google me. I'm not that much of a mystery. Um, so it's not that unknown, but I'm sure like it's a, it's, it's um. Uh, it's a rich environment for it's more like catfish woman. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. You know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you so you went on a date. You said one was a few hours long, and it went really well. At the end of the date, do you wave from across the street at each other? Like, what? what how does it end? <laughs> it's funny. So uh, my good thing is, and I learned this from kids, and I love them. I saw them at the park. Uh, we touch toes. Uh. <laughs> that's how I greet people. Um, touch those. Yeah. Um, and I told I told it from the kids in um at the park. I told it to the kids in my building. Mm-hmm. I see them on my roof, and uh, and I do it with my friends. Whoever I see, uh, we touch toes. Um, to greet greet each other. And when I go on these dates, I tell them that's how I mm-hmm. greet people. And at the end of the date, we touch toes, and um, <laughs> go about our merry way. But that's like the new handshake. Yeah. 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 Um, and you can actually tell, like, it was kind of interesting um, because at the end of my last date, he was very keen to touch toes. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, at the time, at the time, my toes, I wanted to touch. That's cute. Yeah. Now, okay. Is there conversation happening in between? Are there like phone calls and texting and stuff, or is it really you're waiting for the next walk? Oh no, we're. Te- I mean, uh, we're texting most. Okay. Um, and and again, like, I just want to make sure that it's not like you know, hundreds of people I'm dealing with, like, I'm chatting with maybe like four or five people and I've met 
two of them in walks, um, and then and then that's it really. So like hundreds of people. And good uh, for so them, by the way, because I think it's really intimidating to date you. Like based on you said, like you said, you can Google you, and so like good for all of the people who've made it to this round. <laughs> that's, funny. that's funny. I don't think that I don't. I don't know what's more intimidating is like my kind of pragmatic. Um, grilling of their COVID. <laughs> <laughs> no, but why that's great is that it's a real quick indication of who you are. Like I thought about that with within with Alexis. Like I think within a few of our first texts, I sent like a few paragraphs. Like this is who I am. This is how I show up in the world. This is what I'm looking for. Here's a, a, a photo of the flip chart paper with color. <laughs> like <laughs> you should get real clear, real quick <laughs> who yeah, you're yeah. talking to. And so right once you're like tell me what your exposure rate has been it helped me understand what quality of mask you have how many varieties how often do you clean them and they're gonna know yeah no exactly exactly it's very it's very uh it's very telling <laughs> um, I, it's, it's, this is the new norm you know I, I do think it's actually kind of interesting you're absolutely right in that it does give people an insight otherwise you wouldn't have with your regular you know dinner and a drink mm -hmm. you know, like those cookie cutter dates which most of us go on yes are really kind of honestly i think they're a waste of time like your, I, I your first three traditional dates i think are a waste of time and, and i don't think they really tell you anything um unless you're paying a, unless you're paying a lot of attention to what i call the metadata right things people are not saying but it's my job right mm -hmm. so it's my job to listen in a very specific way to people and like evaluate not only what they're saying but also like what they're not saying and and so, but if if I sort of take those professional ears off and like listen as an average person, um, I find the first three days you can just throw them throw them out. Yeah, like they don't, they're yeah. dull, frankly, in my opinion, because it's just yeah, two no, people no. pretending to be two people on a date as opposed right. to same thing i w whenever i date someone new i say i tell them i i want to skip the beginnings like let's get to the middle, the middle. Let's get to date four or five. Let's just do that first because that's so much more interesting. Right, 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 right. Exactly, exactly. And I think given the kind of situation, you have to jump to those like date four, date five pretty early on. Yes. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a bit like, as I said, having that safer sex conversation, um, but less stigmatized, which is, I think, also so, I mean, I don't know. I have some interesting predictions about what this situation is going to do to us. I'm hoping the, the vigilance that we've developed around asking around COVID-19 might mm -hmm. translate down the line. Mm -hmm. um, that sort of like knowing about risk tolerance, knowing about how you protect yourself, which is something we have to do globally. I'm hoping we'll translate safer steps down the line. Yeah. Like yeah. asking about masks, you know, maybe will translate into like asking about common use. Yeah. yeah. And I also think that how people show up, you shared this with me at some point, right? Where you show up one place is how you can show up every place. Like, you know, Carolyn, who works with us, was talking about hookup culture and how people are like, I haven't had any symptoms. If you haven't had any symptoms, then let's just hook up. Like, we're probably fine. And so if that's how you're showing up to this, then you may continue to, <laughs> to show up that way in the world. Um, right, right. Exactly. So you're getting like immediate, um, you're getting immediate insight. Yes. All right. So I have a question then, because you, so right now, dog, COVID dog walking dates is like jumping to date four. So what happens when you get to like actual date four or five or six or seven or eight and like the toes touching is not enough. Like now you want to advance past toe touching on day eight, date eight of your right. dog walk. What uh -huh. happens now? Yeah, maybe take the mask off. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a little smile and a little wink, and then that's it, and put it back back up. <laughs> I don't know. That's a really good question. I don't know. You know, um, at some point, things, you know, things would have, would need to, or at least uh, hopefully there'll be, I'm hoping that if these are like eight dates, there's desire to get physical. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't got there yet, you know, and I think, I mean, I think right now the situation is sort of challenging us to define a bunch of things, right? We define mm -hmm. what um, sex looks like, what intimacy looks like, what connection looks like, mm -hmm. um, as well as how do we, how can we be creative around experiencing those things in other ways that we're used to, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, we talk about, you know, like our very basic, uh, general definition of sex is a hard penis and a wet vagina and that's what 
um, that's where, that's where we start, and that's kind of reductive and. Frankly. That is the sexiest definition that I've ever heard. <laughs> you take a hard penis and a wet vagina. Wet vagina and that is sex. Um, so I think you know we would have to think about you know a much more of a broader definition of sex and intimacy and connection, and then try to play that out somehow. Mm -hmm. I haven't got that yet. Um, unlike you who is right now residing with two partners in the same household. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Well, what's interesting too for me, as you were saying that, I was thinking, I think in the queer community, we've already redefined sex because now it's not necessarily, I don't need necessarily a hard penis. So I, there could be two wet vaginas or in some cases, two penises or in some cases, no genitals, like however people show up to it. Um, so I think that people are figuring out ways already to be more creative. Um, but no, certainly I've had to think about that. I think where you're in a space of trying to figure out what happens in day eight, I'm, you know, being asked well, what's going to happen tonight. Like, where am I going to sleep and <laughs> what's going to happen? And for me, so we are in week three of micro community polycule quarantine. I'm in a house with my wife and my partner and my daughter and myself. Um, we were here, we were supposed to be here for two weeks and then now it's week three. We'll see if we get some reprieve at some point, but you know, we, we, we just did another round of big food shopping. So we'll be here for a little bit. Um, and one of the things actually that did come up as concerned more with my, my partner than my wife is where was I going to sleep at night? And in my mind, the rebel in me was like, I sleep wherever I want. Like I'll decide that day. And, and, uh, <laughs> as I'm saying it, I'm doing my like back and forth posturing. I don't know why that feels like, like an act of, of, you know, of rebellion and, and uh, making a decision where I was going to be. But I realized particularly for her, and we've, we eventually had a conversation around it probably week two was that we needed, she preferred more structure. Mm -hmm. So she was like, I don't want to anticipate every night. Like, is it going to be me? Um, mm -hmm. like we weren't going for like a bachelorette kind of, you know, who gets the rose tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I decided, and I realized that what it was for me was feeling like I was giving all of myself away, that if I defined out, I'm going to be here in this room and here in that room, that it left no space for me. And, um, I had a conversation, you know, in therapy about it and realized that actually what the best compromise was, was to say two nights with my girlfriend, two nights with my wife and three nights by myself. Mm -hmm. here here and that was yeah. that was what i determined um we i feel really grateful to be in a space that has four bedrooms and so i claimed one as my own and so i decided that that was how it was going to be i was going to spend two days in one room two days in the other and three days all by myself so um yeah. and so it was a it, and, and I, frankly it hadn't even occurred to me that that was a possibility before that before i like came to that decision and it's made my life so much better as a result um but the first two weeks, at least, that I was here, I was not interested in sex. I was too stressed or busy or just irritated at, at, at all the meals that needed to be made and how everyone was hungry all the time. It felt like every few hours people were hungry. <laughs> like, why is everyone always hungry? Um, and that was just really consuming me. And I just didn't feel like, let alone, I didn't even want to hug, really, let alone sex. And then at some point, like something broke that. And, and then I was like, oh, why wasn't I doing this? This is great. Mm -hmm. Like, what? You want to have sex? Yeah. Yeah. And then you were like, oh, yeah. yeah. That, dude, that feels really good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's an added complication. And for those, those folks who are out there, and I understand that some of the clients that you work with, and I know folks that, you know, some friends of mine, are quarantining with folks that they wouldn't normally be that are in their lives but wouldn't normally be in their homes and so the mm -hmm. other kind of emotional thing for me to m emotional block is that my daughter is in the space and my wife is in the space and my partner's in, like these are all kind of different worlds that are colliding and it takes a level of vulnerability and a level of safe space to be sexual at least for me and mm -hmm. so to do that and to not wonder if my daughter's gonna have a nightmare and I need to go in and check on her or to do that and not wonder, you know, if my wife is feeling, you know, bad or lonely or whatever, 
which is very rarely the case. She's so wildly autonomous. She's like fast asleep. She doesn't care. But she doesn't. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's that, really yeah. my own stuff. Exactly. It's really. Yeah, totally. my own. But but all to say that that was a real thing. Like those are mental blocks that I have to get over. Um, it's almost like if you ever stayed with a partner at your parents' house for the holidays. And then you're like, should we have sex here? But we have to be real quiet because we don't want them to know. And you're in your childhood bedroom. And so that's like creepy. Like, so there's just like these psychological layers that you have to unpack in order to get to that space. Um, But then once it happened, I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it feels good. Wait a minute was this like this the whole time um and so yeah and i think the other piece of it too is just when i'm in conflict i'm like not interested in, in it either um i feel like wildly autonomous more than ever when i'm in conflict like i'm i need no one when i'm mad mm-hmm. and there have been more issues of conflict because we're all on top of each other and so i think that was been another case so part of it has been like redefining it for me. Like what does connection in this space look like? What does intimacy look like? What does sex look like in, in us in when it's not my normal type of sex based on these, these circumstances? So that's what I've been grappling with. Yeah. And sex can be so many things, you know, I mean, I, and, and it, it's such a rich area of our lives that we don't talk enough about. And we're definitely, I know that as curious folks are covering so much more um, through the programming and, and, you know, I, I you know, I've been saying this, for a while and right now it's even more potent i think sex as a hobby sex as a hobby is a great thing to do with your partner or your partners or whoever you're with just like having some added some and uh, having an attitude towards sex is like something that you're gonna learn something you're gonna try on it's something you're gonna you know mm-hmm. um and seeing the time if it's available to you to kind of like get into some stuff that you otherwise wouldn't you know maybe like you know i've been calling them sex labs you know like couple of days a week maybe do like some adult time sex lab where you i don't know mm. take a workshop read a book or you know um you know come to one of our events and then like take a you know take the next evening take, take the next night as like sex labs like let's let's see how this one works out you mm-hmm. know i think it's a great time to have sex as, as a hobby and 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 as you are labbing sex as you are kind of like exploring it just keep defining keep defining it and redefining it for yourself oh we try this thing it didn't work you know or this thing oh my god i never thought i would like this but i'm loving it you know like then add it to your repertoire of what, what sex is for you what feels good for you what you want to count as sex you know um essentially i think sex is anything that arouses you mm-hmm. right the intention of like a sexual arousal uh, sexual arousal and that could be anything you know, that could, that could literally be anything, you know, someone's elbow can be mm-hmm. like, arousing and, mm-hmm. and a, 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 you know, point of sexual arousal for you. And if you're touching that elbow with the sexual arousal, mm-hmm. you're having sex, mm-hmm. you know, um, that's why like sexting is a thing and, and like coming is a thing. Like those, all those things count as sex because we're sexually aroused. Yeah. So yeah. we can do that. I'm interested in, in the, in, in certainly in the play, like seeing it more as play. And what it makes me think about is re- sex in different mind states. So mm-hmm. like angry sex, which for me, like I, I would love to have angry sex. That is not a thing that I do. I think, like I said, when I get angry, I'm more like shut down, and, like my mm-hmm. armor goes up, but that mm-hmm. feels like that would be a great way to resolve it. I don't know. Based on, it feels like my, my, my access to that is like, movies in movies there's angry sex and everyone feels better afterwards i don't know what that looks like in reality because when i'm angry i do not have sex yeah um, do, you mean like ang- do you mean like having sex with a partner that you're angry with or having yes. sex with somebody else no 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 with someone that you're angry with uh-huh. so that you are in conflict but uh-huh. you like ha- yeah exactly conflict sex yeah <laughs> um there so that seems interesting to me or like super like I'm or sad sex also seems Mm. like super comforting. Like I'm interested in exploring it as a tool to like, like alleviate boredom to play, to like comfort me when I'm sad to work out my aggression when I'm angry. Like I'm interested in using it as, as like different platforms for, for other things. Um, and I haven't played in that space as much. Yeah. I've definitely had sad sex. Um, and healing sex 
you know, I think sex is healing is something that we don't talk about. And when we do, it's kind of in this, like, we f- I found another um, sexy song. Sexual. <laughs> <You're Yeah. very> <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. Uh, I think we need to do sex. Uh, <laughs> we wanted to pepper this episode with all the sex songs that we can Exactly. <laughs> yes, um, in the show notes, please write your the title for your favorite sex song. We should do a playlist. <gasps> we should have a Curious Fox Spotify playlist of all our favorite early 90s sexy songs um but but let's talk about that i am interested in 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 sex as healing because i think that that has happened to me more in my current partnership i think than that's happened before where i felt like i don't even know how to describe it like different layers of myself be revealed in the course of that level of intimacy like in sexual intimacy like experiencing she sees it she my my partner describes it as like my eyes clear up and like she can almost like see into me deeper like where like i won't like my vulnerability or my armor kind of comes off in a different way and it does feel really comforting and healing yeah and you're not worried about being sexy you're not worried about performing you're not worried you're just like people in this space in this moment together so like i've i've captured a little bit of the power of that and definitely think that i've just scratched the surface and like want to be intentional about creating like set and setting like creating the mindset and creating the setting to lean into those spaces and really redefine it that sex is not just we're going to do this to get off or like we're turned on, but whether or not being turned on, like creating a space for this is the, this is what we're going to do. And this is how we're going to explore today. I'm interested in that. Yeah. I do believe that sexual expression is a part of your self expression and it's not everyone's like leading self expression, just like not everyone's the visual artist and that's their self, that's their self expression. But I think, you know, everybody can draw, you know, and they will express some part of themselves through their drawing or painting. Same with sex. I think the way that you have sex, the way you um, express yourself in that space is a part of who you are, a part of your identity. And I think if you can create spaces where you can be fully self-expressed, um, those are the spaces where you can heal. Because if you can't expose yourself, you can't expose the wounds, then you can't heal, right? Go the fester. And I think if you can create spaces that is like, you know, sex is also a powerful, I know, energetic experience, right? I mean, it's literally like ener- like energy that, that is uh, generated. And I think if you can create spaces where you can be fully self-expressed, then sort of lean into that energy and really experience that energy, I think it will heal some of the, the sort of the wounds or the hurt. Especially if you have any kind of trauma that is sex related, um, or sex, I would say sex and relationship related, right? So it's like, can you get to a place where you feel safe in those, you know, in in a sexual, um, in a sexual space? Mm-hmm. And in safety, can can then the act of sex be anchoring? Mm-hmm. Like, can you find a safer space where you can be fully self-expressed, feel safe. And then, like, doing something so profound, like having, you know, having sex, then you can anchor that feeling. And that's, like, regenerative. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. I think that I've gone through that process as it relates to masturbation. So when mm-hmm. I was growing up, we were very religious. And not only just faith and spiritual spirituality, but religion was very important in my household. And we would go to church three days a week. Um, we had... Uh, church on Sundays, we had Bible study on Wednesdays, and then we had like youth groups on Fridays. And it was very like clear to me, it, sex was both it, clearly wrong, but also wildly ambiguous. I think I learned more about sex from like HBO and Showtime after hours than I did mm-hmm. from, you know, any other space. And mm-hmm. in fact, I remember learning, like learning words, like learning what the, the, the word come was or orgasm was or even masturbation was like in high school mm-hmm. via tv like being like oh that's the thing and now i had probably been masturbating since i was in grade school i would say maybe 10 11 something like that and i remember telling my mom about it 
Like I remember saying to her, I um, like would get a tingling feeling, almost like if you get an itch that you want to scratch. And so then I would like, you know, like try to resolve the tingling feeling. And I remember her saying, like, I remember like walking up to her, you know, while she was in the living room, she was on the couch, like reading the paper. I remember sharing this with her. I remember she put the paper down and looked at me and said, that's disgusting. And I remember as a child, I also kind of battled with some depression. And I remember at the time also having the secret in my mind around some of the dark thoughts that I was thinking. And I remember saying to her, I'm not, if you think that's bad, like, I'm not going to tell you anything that I'm thinking anymore. And it really severed. There was a lot of severing. That was one of the places where it severed a relationship between he, she and I and, and made our relationship much more difficult. But it also really captured for me, oh, this is really bad. Mm -hmm. And I remember really struggling. I have a lot of sexual energy and always have. And I remember like that inner battle that I would have with myself mm -hmm. where my body was like craving touch and, and just filled with sexual energy. And I would be so sad about the fact that I like wanted to do something about it, felt so tortured about it. And I remember at some point I was probably in high school or college trying to make like packs with God and saying like, cause I was so regretful every single time I did it after I would mm -hmm. masturbate, I would just feel awful. I would feel like a terrible person. I would feel like, you know, like God was going to punish me. And I, rem and I remember afterwards, cause I was, I'm the oldest of three and I had two other siblings. We were all on the same floor. I would, you know, at some point finally give in after lots of like trying to resist. And then afterwards I would go to my peek in my sister's room. My, my sister is eight years younger than I am. And I would peek in to see if she was still there because in my mind, if Jesus had come back and, you know, in the Christian faith, Jesus is going to come and, uh, the, you know, he's going to take all of the, the, the people of faith to heaven and all the rest will be left behind. And I would peek in because the children would be taken as well to see if she was still there because I was convinced that the second coming had happened while I was masturbating and that Jesus left me behind. Oh, yeah. And... And yeah, and I remember like, making deals with God, like apologetically after I would masturbate and say, like, I promise that I won't do this again. And if I do, like, if I am meant to, to have three children in my life, take one away. And like, if I do it again, then take two of my unborn children away. And like, and I would, and with the idea that that would shock me into reality, that the, that the idea of losing a future child would be enough to stop me. And then inevitably when it would happen again, I would just like beat myself up over the fact that even my own child, like my future child that I've now given to God wasn't enough motivation for me not to touch myself. So I give that context <laughs> to provide a level of like... I'm sorry. The torture around sexuality and, and, and that. And and so eventually that evolved over time and I would feel certainly less, particularly after I got married. Really, it wasn't until after I got married to my ex-husband that I felt like safe, sex was safe because now I was married. So now I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, now. And then within that, I was able, we were together about 10 years. We were able, I was able to explore myself more, my sexuality a little bit more in that space. And so then I became more and more comfortable with masturbation, and but it still felt like I would do it secretly or quietly next to my partner while they were sleeping and super, super still. Like, I'm very good at super still mm -hmm. masturbation. Like, nothing moves, no one moves, super quiet, like, right? Or, like, real quick, I can also, like, I can masturbate in common within under a minute. Like, I, mm -hmm. I can make it happen really quickly because it was, like, it, there was still shame around it. Mm -hmm. Now I, like, all but announce it to the room. Like, all right, everybody, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> I will be away for a few hours. I will be away for a set amount of time. Like I'll see, you or, or just afterwards, you know, if if I come downstairs and my partner's like, "Where were you?" I was like, "This is what I was doing." And she's like, "What? You didn't invite me?" I was like, "It wasn't about you." Um, <laughs> but it really, I've seen there a place of evolution between really having such conflicted feelings around sexuality to feeling better about doing it, but still feeling shame. To now coming to a place where I create set and setting. Where I'm like, okay, Jack, is this a quickie kind of thing where I just need a little pop of energy or trying to resolve something? Or am I really trying to lean into it? Like the other day, I was like, let me make sure I'm comfortable. Like everyone was out of the house, like they were playing somewhere. And I was like, okay, let me take my time. So that I've gone through that transition with myself. I just haven't done that as much in partnership, in sex partnership, like in, in sex with somebody else. Yeah. I, uh, so a couple of things, I think, how you do anything is how you do everything. I sound like a boy. 
Um, I think that um, the way that you are showing up in your relationship is probably the way that you're showing up in the sexual side of that relationship. So it's just, you know, do you trust that person ultimately deep down or are you still, is there a part of you still thinks that you're the adult, you're the only adult in the room, mm. right? Even in a sexual situation, you know, that you are the one that needs to still have one foot out or like one, like, you imagine sex is to be this like whirlwind of an experience where you're going to be like lifted and thrown around. Like, is there a part of you that still needs to have a toe on the ground so you don't lose like where the, where the ground is, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Um, so like that, that will take you, that take you out of the experience, right? Mm-hmm. Or if you're, like a part of the sexual, like healing through sex is about reconnecting with your body, right? So the idea is that, a lot, of, a lot of trauma is kept in the body, like is it stored in the, the body memory, they call it. So um, sometimes our brain, um, what I call deep archives trauma, because it's an efficient machine that wants mm-hmm. you to keep it and it doesn't like it doesn't want you to live in a, even in a you know in a snapshot of, of a trauma, right? If you do, they call it PTSD. So it kind of does this like clever archiving thing and then it like puts you know certain memories deep into the into like deep archives of the brain so you don't necessarily have the memory of the trauma but you have the experience of it like something will happen you'll get triggered and then emotion will come up and you're like i feel sad right now i can't really tell you why absolutely I'm have you experienced that that's absolutely happened to me before where like oh, there was like a, a, a particular touch or a action or movement that immediately I just went to the corner and like huddled into myself and didn't know why, didn't remember what, did, but something clearly happened that I don't remember that that touch just brought up for me. And I like, like flew to the other side of the room and just like got into a fetal position. Yeah. I mean, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I have, I have a, a history of, development of trauma so yeah absolutely and, and it does not only in sex like there's some random situations where i'll be like uh I, I will i won't even realize that i'm crying people will be like are you okay i'm like why you're crying oh i'm crying like i'm so disconnected that i don't even know that i'm crying in that moment never mind why i'm crying but i don't even know that i'm having an emotional reaction like i, I and and i'm so intellectualized like i'll be like thinking hard about something and then, you know, who I'm, whoever I'm with, they're like, I, you know, they're just like their face changes and they're like, whoa, what's happening? And I'm like, I'm not really sure. Like I'm so split mm-hmm. from myself. So, um, yeah. And it definitely happened. I mean, it, it is a well-reported thing that happens in sex. Like people will be like, seem to be having a great time and suddenly like all hell breaks loose or they're like completely shut down. Mm-hmm. And this is also, um, you know, this is like digressing a little bit, but, um, there are also situations where um, during sex something happens and the person's triggered and they shut down and they're having unwanted sex in that moment and they don't even know or they can't even change they can't say no they can't like stop it happening so it ends up being this like questionable area of like was it rape mm. or unwanted sex that you couldn't like snap out of it and that's why like communication is so important during mm-hmm. sex if something happened. Um, and then you you just shut down because you're having a, a trauma trigger. Um, mm-hmm. And the person has no idea, you know, and they're like, you know, doing their thing. And then they can find out the next day or like moments later that like what they're doing is hurting the other person. Like there's all these like gray mm-hmm. areas um, that around sex because sex is the ultimate connection with your body, your body, mind, and soul, you know, if you look at it in this like spiritual kind of way. Um, and that's why it can both be very, very triggering in the way that you just described and very, very healing because mm-hmm. what if then you go back to the thing that triggered you um, and you really pad the environment, right? You, you kind of go back to, um, now that you found that that's a trigger, you go back to a, a, a trusted partner you like soften the environment to whatever you need it to be. And then you go back there again. And then now you feel safe this time. Maybe mm-hmm. you can experience that touch again and like connect with that part of your body and see maybe it'll like both either release the trauma or maybe trigger the memory so you can process it again. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of the whole like healing through sex is, is really about that. It's really about getting you connected to, to your body memory and working with some of these body memories, the, the, the sort of trauma memories that mm. otherwise you can't down. Like you can't think, you can't 
you know, it won't come up, it won't come up on talk therapy because your brain literally can't access the memory, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, there, there are other modalities that you can do EMDR, like other like trauma therapies that essentially like dig into the deep archive to get some of these things up and, and processed. But your regular talk therapy probably won't be able to like touch the sort of deep archive trauma stuff, but touch probably can, you know, yeah. and set, touch intimacy, sex, you know, that kind of vulnerability, like that, that sort of powerful concoction can really get some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. See, that's interesting to me because I, I mean, that makes sense and I'm drawn to that. And I think that's why, like we've talked about casual sex and that's not something really that I've done, but I think part of that is because I see it so tied to vulnerability and intimacy and that would be harder for me to get to that place with someone who I don't know very well. And you know, I've experienced that, like, for example, you know, even folks who I've been, I've met online and, you know, we, the conversation evolves just via text and it starts to get sexual via text and, you know, start, there would start to be scenarios. It's like, I'm going to take you to this place. I'm going to do this thing. You're going to call me that thing. And there's a part of me would like gets into it. And then at some point I like reality check and I'm like, well, you know that I'm not really a slut, right? Like you, you know that I'm not real. like you're not, I want to make sure that you have a sense that that's not who I actually am. Like we're just playing characters now. And I kind of have to break like the fourth wall, like every once in a while to be like, but that to me is an indication that there's not trust there. Mm -hmm. Like that I have to keep. And so I'm interested in that, like how to play in a space and maybe there always needs to be trust. And I I don't know, I don't know how to play in a space where there isn't that level of trust because I feel like I'm going to continue to do that and be like, wait, 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 who are you again? Like, are you, are you safe for me? Like, do you know who I am? Yeah, I guess it's true. I mean, I think maybe if you want to go down that path of like casual, um, how do you sort of do that casually is maybe trust in yourself, Mm. knowing that you can handle the situation, trust in knowing Mm. that it doesn't matter what they think about you. You know who you are enough that if some stranger thinks you're a slut, you're like, oh, well, you know, Mm -hmm. something in the world, you know, or that, that you have faith and trust in who you are and how you show up, that it doesn't really matter. Mm. And that you can handle the situation that comes up. Um, It's slightly different if if it's like a, on on a physical level, it's slightly different if you're a woman dating a guy. It's a little different if you're, and that is probably true. That is a trend. I think that I feel that way much more when I'm dating and talking to men. Yeah, I mean, some of this is just like pure physicality of it, right? You the know? Safety, yeah. People, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I happen to like like tall, fit men, you know, like the opposite of me, who can like easily power, you know, overpower me, you know. Mm-hmm. So, like, do I put myself in those situations? Not really, because it's not physically safe, you know. Mm-hmm. But if I was, you know, I'm way more likely to get into a casual situation with a woman than I would do with a man on pure f- physical safety, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think. Because I think that I trust myself that I can handle the situation. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Say again? That makes sense, yeah. Yeah. So maybe in that, like, can I trust the other person? I, I, I think I first and foremost trust myself. And then I will then trust the other person within my risk tolerance. Mm-hmm. You know, I trust the other person so much. Yeah. You know? So that circles back to after day eight and risk tolerance and then at what point do you trust that the mask comes off and that the glove comes up the gloves come off and you go within three feet and two feet and one feet of each other yeah i mean it's a really good question uh, i don't really know i haven't got that you know i haven't got that i do think that there are more like you know we started this conversation about like redefining sex redefining intimacy right i, I think that I trust myself that I can find creative and fun ways to experience some of that sexual energy in ways that still feel safe. Mm. And I think that will be even more insightful, you know? And I think at some point, if it really feels like it, you kind of have to pull the trigger, you know? Um, Now, you know, I would maybe say something different if I had asthma, you know, or if I was was taking care of my, like, 80-year-old parents. Right. So it's, the reason I'm saying these things is because I don't want this to be advice to people. Like normally in these shows, we give a lot of advice, we give people guidance and we, you know, talk about, you know, set standards in some sort. So just a massive caveat that this is not advice and this is not 
setting any kind of standard or saying it's what you should do. I have my own, like, I don't, the only person I'm responsible for right now is my dog and he's immune, you know? Um, so if I was taking care of my parents who are away from me right now, I wouldn't go on these dates with, you know, strangers. Um, but right now I'm thinking the worst case scenario is that I will get sick and hopefully I'll pull through and do really, really shitty. Um, hopefully I won't really need a respirator, you know, like, um, but I think, so at some point, date eight, date nine, we've done some like creative sexual things, uh, got intimate, you know, and at some point you're like, okay, well, we'll take that risk, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, hopefully it's worth it. Yeah. And it's harder for you too. Cause you don't like phone sex. You don't like sexting. You don't like virtual sex or porn. Yeah. There's not no, a lot of outlets. Yeah, it doesn't work. I mean, I have to say, I am I am aroused intellectually. Mm -hmm. So, meaning, like, I can get off from a a super nerdy conversation. That sounds really nerdy. No, I, I, I love it. Oh, I'm right there with you. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm. I'm more likely to get off from like a really well thought through, articulate debate. Yes. Than I am through role playing. Mm -hmm. I'm just not very good at role playing and make believe in that kind of way. Like. Mm -hmm. Like a, like a make believe role play, sexting conversation. Um, I will just think like it just doesn't do it for me. But I'm more likely to get sexually aroused aroused from my intellectual debate. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So that's kind of, that's kind of my. Yeah. No, I love. I'm the same way. I think. I think absolutely the way. If somebody can make me think, if someone can challenge me in a way again that that makes that expands the way I think or grow complete turn on i think then i like mo too all right well let, let's see where else we can take it i think then then that's where for me like the role play conversations begin but yes i agree well that so yeah. then it may happen i mean if this person already if there was some like real quick toe tapping it may be sooner than day eight who knows yeah 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 in my um in my dating profile it says um teach me something and you have my attention mm. uh, and uh he did he's the first person to get me to really understand this is, this is how unsexy it is for me. Uh, first, you can really get me to understand and answer my questions about blockchain, which is what Bitcoin is built on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel really wonderful. <laughs> no, I love it. I'm amused that you're laughing because I'm like, yes, that sounds great. There's like, there's not only is there no judgment, I'm totally like, yes, I need you to explain to me because I don't understand Bitcoins. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was just like, it was really good because he was, you know, he's a, he's a pro, at, he's a, he's an engineer and he not only explained it to me, but he could answer like all my questions yeah. and yeah. we could have a debate on like the social and political and economical impact of, of something like cryptocurrency can have and what opportunities there are, what mm -hmm. restrictions there are. You know, it was a, it was a really like rich intellectual conversation and I was like, yeah, like that, that was arousing. I came home, it's funny, I came home and I masturbated because like I, I was aroused. Nice. That's, that's more likely to arouse me than role playing like conversations. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, no, that makes sense. And I'm sure that they're different. This is what's beautiful for me personally about being in an open relationship. Like there are different things that are going to feed me at different times. I think because, and you may relate to this, because I am a, a, a person who is very strong willed, that is highly independent, that is very intellectual, that is very ambitious. People often call me intimidating and <laughs> lots of other things as it relates to that. Um, but someone who can hold their own is very attractive to me, as is though sometimes someone who can really take care of me, like someone who can be super soft and comforting, like, and I don't have to take care of them. And so there are different aspects, I think, to that same thing. Like if you can challenge me, and if you can also like hold me when I need to be held, like if you can do those things, like if you can, to your point, teach me something, if you can hold your own in debate, because everyone out there will likely lose a debate with me. But if you can win, <laughs> then I'm going to find you interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Sonny, just the whole like intimidating thing, I am, um, mm -hmm. I have very strong feelings about that. Yes. Um, if somebody tells me I'm intimidating, um, I tend to flip it around and say, no, you're intimidated. Mm -hmm. And that's on not on me. Yes. So I'm going to get that on a shirt. I am not intimidating. You might be intimidated. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's my style. I'm very clear. It comes up often enough for me to be like, nope, 
I'm not taking anything of that. I'm not taking that. That's all you. Mm-hmm. Nothing to do with you. You know. Um, so, and also, I don't set out to mean. I don't set out to intimidate anyone. So that's yeah. the other thing. Like, I don't have the intention. Sometimes, like, if I wanted to, like, my version of fight, flight, or freeze. Like my version of fight is an intellectual fight, and it is an aggressive, intimidating. Like yes. you know, um, so like those situations to one side. I don't go around like wanting, like I don't go on dates thinking I'm going to be, you know, like that's not that's not how I'm vibing. And if someone's intimidated, I would prefer if they own that and say, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm intimidated right now. I'm more likely to like. Oh, tell me more. Like, what's going on with you? The more you can meet them there, yeah. then you're intimidating. Then right. I'm like, like, game over. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. No. <laughs> not sexy. In the, in the spirit of redefining sex, that's that's not sexy. That's not sexy. Um, um, well, some actually, for some people, not for us. Maybe if you're like into, you know, doms and other like then intimidation is is very sexy mm-hmm, for so sure. good for you but no not for me <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> good for you but not for me yeah it's interesting because that comes up i'm sure this comes up for you too because i think you're absolutely like there is um there is definitely um there are definitely people who are attracted to intimidation mm-hmm. right it, it's in the kink realm. It is dom sub dynamics. Right. I get and that. Like I'll get DMs. Like you look like such a powerful woman. I want to lick your boots. And I'm like, yeah. and I really, and I say, I'm like, thank you so much. That's not for me, but you should yeah. go find your boots somewhere. It is. Ex- they're out there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. My thoughts. Like yeah. I'm, j- I, yeah, I get that you like my vibe and you like the idea, but that's just not, that just doesn't do it for me. Like I'm not a, um, I keep meaning to like sharpen that, that tool it just doesn't attract me like i don't have any i don't have a desire to intimidate or dominate mm-hmm. anyone um my friend and ex um uh metamor she would be very very clear like she's like i'm into domination um you know she is a like she she is a dom she's a top she's also like she just like loved dominating anything and everything like conversations like <laughs> social <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And that's, that's how she rolls. Like, like, she gets kicks out of that. And that's how she wants to show up in the world yeah. in every area of, of, of her life. Um, I'm just like, that just does not. Uh, yeah, I, I think for me, and this comes from like my, you know, small T trauma of I'm the only adult in the room. I'm exhausted by carrying everything all the time. And I'm, I do not want to willingly do it. Like m- I keep doing it because it feels my default setting. But if given the opportunity, I would love to lighten the load. I'm not actually interested in telling people what to do yeah right, right, right. it's like thinking for the other person i exactly like no. i do enough of, i don't want to do that <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, bitcoin engineer man do not call her intimidating <laughs> or yeah, no, he, was, he, was, he was very sweet actually yeah um he was very sweet he, we did get into some some deep debates um and he was he held his own i nice. appreciated it We've been chatting since. Maybe we'll go on another walk um, soon. We'll see, you know. Um, again, I honestly don't have an... I mean, going back to where we started, I don't really have an answer for day eight. Um, I don't really know what the line in the sand is where you take the masks off and you, like, have a... Like, <laughs> which is actually, you know... I love it. Those are totally going to be movies. Post-COVID, there are going to be movies where that is what happens, where someone rips the mask off. <laughs> And then suddenly, and like, there's like, or maybe it'll be a little like Phantom of the Opera and there were scars that you were hiding, but then they kiss your scars and it's, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Post, no, Post-COVID I'm, world will be beautiful. Hopefully. For sure. Right now, uh, kissing someone is riskier than having sex with someone. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Because you can technically have, you can technically have sex with limited exposure right because yeah. COVID, have they respect. done studies does it does it transfer via sexual fluid no it's it's, it's in the spit because uh, it's in that's right. your, anything respiratory right it's yeah. respiratory. It, and it's in your like nose and, and it can get through your eyes so technically speaking if you had a shower mm-hmm. um, and then you put an n95 on mm-hmm. and if you had a doggy style mm-hmm. Yeah. You are 
<laughs> if there's some hazmat suits and a hard penis and a wet vagina, then some. <laughs> you, can, you know, um, take something that is less risky than making out. Yes. Yes. Or we just, well, can we all use our hands? Oh, no, hands are dirty now. No, no hands. Are gloved dirty. hands? No, gloved hands still because you could be touching things. Oh, there's no way out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know if you're pushing it i don't know like if you uh no don't do it people stay at home <laughs> that is the message. That, this is all just one big psa where the end of it is just stay at home wash your hands and stay at home <laughs> yeah we've, we've tricked you <laughs> we've tricked you all you thought you were gonna listen to a podcast about sex and we're just going to tell you the same watcher. No sex for anyone. That's it. No, no, it's all um, ruse. Um, well, that's, I mean, I, I think that that's true, though. I think we just have to see. I think we have to report back to each other. I think you will report back to me what mm. happens past day eight. I will report back around my emotional exploration of sex and using it for all of of my for my anger for my sadness for my happiness mm -hmm. yeah i think yes for sure i think the thing that i want to also just encourage people again like creativity is the biggest gift that humanity has got you know um i just finished reading um sapiens which is a great book and one of the things that they you know um harari her talks about is how um you know humans are the really the only creative um, creatures in the world, meaning like we are so creative that we um, hold our societies together through make believe. Mm -hmm. Meaning, it is make believe. You know, money is make believe. Mm -hmm. Economy is make believe. Um, all these things are essentially make believe that we organize hundreds and millions of thousands of people in in a community in nations. All these things are make believe. You know, um, none of them are in nature. Um, and it is, it is really the only the humans that do it that way. And so I do believe in the creative um, power of the human. And I think that we are, um, sex is really important to us. Intimacy is really important to us. Connection is really important to us. Those are also very, very real human needs. And I think since we have those needs, given the limitations we need to lean into our creative energy, creative power, and just find hacks. You know, it exists. They exist. And at some point, you know, you might have to take some risks. But I think before you get that, there, there are there are a million things that you can do. Mm -hmm. And we want to hear them. I want people to share your things. I want yeah. to learn something. That's that is now my new call. All right. So two things: stay at home and wash your hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number two: mm -hmm. teach me something. So yeah. I want people <laughs> to comment, call us, email us, DM us, Facebook us, Instagram us. There's so many ways you can find us. Teach me something. I want to learn how, how you're doing this. Um, what day eight has looked like for you. How you have, emo have you na navigated the emotional landscape of ESX and how you're mm -hmm. being sexually creative during the time of COVID. Really, absolutely, yeah. Like, um, I, I definitely want to hear about people's sex labs and what they're finding out. Yeah. And, and like, what they're loving and what they're, like, pegging, awful idea. Mm -hmm. You know, or, or, um, or like, spankings just changed my life. Yes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. I thought you were telling me that. I thought you were saying right now, pegging's an awful idea. I was like, really? Um, <laughs> yes, yes. We want to hear. And <laughs> if there are topics that people want to explore, like we are, so we've done a few on a communication. We have now, uh, Stella is going to be joining us again, Stella Harris, to do something around um, sexting and sex talk and how do we initiate sexual play via dialogue with people who are, we are quarantined with and away from. Um, mm -hmm. And so that, so we are very excited to be introducing new things. Let us know what you want to hear about. Yeah. Um, and you can do that in uh, many places. So um, we can tell you. So you can find us. First of all, you can follow us. So I think you should just follow us everywhere. We are Curious Fox. You can follow us on, page, on um, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we also have a Patreon page, and we'll tell you about that in a minute. So just like follow us across the board. And Visit our website. Um, and we have a website. Uh, yeah, we've been desperately building this website for a while, and it just went live. Um, 
So yeah, we are curious. We are curiousfoxes dot com, um, and so you can find us on our website and Facebook, Instagram, and use those channels to let us know what's going on with you, um, how your sex lives are going, are you dating, what does dating look like for you, what are your thoughts about, um, you know, sex during this time? Are you having a lot of it? Are you not having any of it? Um, tell us all about that. Also, tell us what you want to hear about. Tell us what you want us to talk about, any kind of um, educators or, or that you're inspired by or any kind of topics that you want to learn about. Um, we want to hear from that stuff too. Um, and then you can also email us at listening at wearecurious.com. Wearecuriousboxes.com. That's listening at wearecuriousboxes.com. So that's how you can get in touch with us. That's right. And we have a phone number. You can call us if you are interested in asking us a question, having it played on a future episode and us answering it, that you can give us a call at 201-870-0063, 201-870-0063. And you can, if you are willing to put your voice in this podcast, that makes me think that you enjoy listening to this podcast, which makes me think that you should be liking and commenting and sharing this podcast. Hashtag change the noise is is what we are trying to do. We are trying to um, challenge the status quo that is out there around what love, sex, and relationships can be and present other options and other things for you to curiously explore. And so we really ask that you like, that you review, and that you share. It does make a difference. We are trying to get some sponsorships and some collaborations and some partnerships, and so that really will help. And the other way that you can support if you're interested in the, in the work that we're doing and it's been a benefit to you is to follow us on Patreon and become a, pa a patron. If you are a patron, just for, you can, uh, there are different tiers. So just for $5 a month, you can become a patron all the way up to a pack leader. So you can become a pup, you can be a fox, or you can be a pack leader at $20 a month. Um, and with that, you get a lot of free things. So number one, every single month on the first Wednesday of the month, we do a social and it, now we're doing a virtual social and is just for patrons. So we get together, we all talk, we connect with each other. We have fun only for patrons. Then we do virtual soirees. Our last one was a pajama party. And we played truth or dare. We read a, bed, a sexy bedtime story. We did a dance party. We did a lot of fun things. And if you're a patron, you get to go to those things for free. You also get discounts to our uh, educator-led events, which we are doing now. We've been doing once a week. Um, and there's a lot of benefits. You get to ask questions and things like that. So you should become a patron. There's no reason why you're not. Exactly. There's no reason why you shouldn't uh, become a Patreon. It's just um, it's a matter of um, some clicks. So patreon.com forward slash we are curious foxes. Patreon.com forward slash we are curious foxes. Um, we'll be right here next week. Until then, stay curious. Curious Fox podcast is not and will never be the final word on any topic. We solely aim to encourage curiosity and provide a space for exploration through connection and story. We encourage you to listen with an open and curious mind and we'll look forward to your feedback. Stay curious, friends. Stay curious. 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 Stay curious.